Mercedes Benz, I'm getting our S Class serviced. It's just a regular service um, period, so I just wanted to get that knocked out of the way. So I figured while I'm here, I would test drive a car or two and make a video of doing a little comparison. So basically, as you already know, this is the S Class. These things are kind of old now because they've been out since like 2014, 2015. And, um, you know, I always like seeing different new cars because they sometimes have newer interiors. This interior is not just like ours. This interior is white with the brown on it. It's got the walnut and everything. But their white interiors are so fantastic and so beautiful and so lovely. It's like, it's just absolutely lovely. And, um, you know, Car and Driver did an S-Class versus BMW 7. I did my own S-Class versus BMW 7. And um, basically nothing's changed. It's like, I really wish BMW had shown everybody this color instead of black. Because if they compare their Cognac interior to the Mercedes S-Class with the regular black interior, it's just not as nice and it just doesn't stand out as well. But um, these things have very large interiors. As you remember, I was one of the first people on YouTube to have a video of the new S-Class W222 uh, when it first came out. That was right before we leased one for our business. And um, huge amounts of floor space. But I will say this, after you get used to driving in an SUV, especially if it's a large SUV, no, not even the leg space in one of these S classes is enough anymore. It's like SUVs are gonna make a killing simply because they offer so much ridiculous space by trading off height for length. So the S class here, this thing's over 220 inches long. But if you get an SUV, you may get an SUV that's shorter, but it's so much taller that you sit upright. And because you sit upright, it feels like it has more space than if you're you know, laying on the ground in a car like this. So that's the S-Class right there. And as you know, that's the E-Class AMG, but that's the old one. And then this is one of the new C-Classes. And these uh, Mercedes is doing a really good job selling these things. You can get these with all types of colors, all types of interior options and everything. It's a step up from the Mercedes CLA. A lot of people say they don't like the CLA, and most of them don't like it because it's like front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. They wanted a rear-wheel drive, not that it really matters. Because, you know, nowadays we're driving so slow, we're in traffic and everything. You know, this is the C-Class. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much straightforward. It's a good car. It's a good car. It's a lovely car. It looks good. It looks exactly like the S-Class and the E-Class AMG, which I'm test driving in and I'm going to show you. So I'm basically making this video just as an interior comparison it's just my own little interior comparison why not and uh, this car has colored lighting that you can manipulate and uh, good looking car and uh, you just uh, just basically put the key in you turn it on and uh, this one didn't have the push to start one of the things about European cars European cars typically don't have auto starters you know, they don't have auto starters because they have uh, so many emissions regulations that they're, a lot of them typically aren't allowed to have it. This car is pretty much straightforward. It's like, you know, you have this silly little screen. Some people don't like the way this screen is designed. They don't like the fact that it's cut, it looks like a cutout. It looks like somebody slapped a tablet on there, but that's just what it is. That's just what you get nowadays. And uh, the new C-Class is selling very well. The new E-Class is selling very well. And as I'm going to show you, there's reasons for that. It's because they put a decent engine in it. I don't like twin turbo V6s, but you know, you got to take your hits where they come because of these goddamn European emissions regulations. But, um, you know, some people don't like the turbo four cylinder, which I totally understand. I feel that there's too much turbo lag in most of Mercedes vehicles. But other than that, I mean, they, they did a great job making the C-Class feel like an S-Class, which is the top of their line. You know, when you take out like the roadsters and everything, when you take those cars out of the foray. But um, good cars, easy to attain. E classes, C classes, you can get them on lease relatively easy if you have decent credit, which you should if you have any plans whatsoever of getting a Mercedes Benz. Considering, um, you know, you got to have good credit for just in case you have to make any repairs, you should have enough money to do so. But um, I like them, I like every last one of them. 
And uh, I think definitely one of the next cars that I get will probably be an E-Class. It might be another S-Class, but the thing about it is in Manhattan, parking is just so ridiculous that, you know, you have to kind of decide. It's like, you know, do we want to get a big car for a car service or do you want to get something a little bit smaller? But ultimately, the SUVs make more sense because when we have clients going from JFK to LaGuardia, ultimately what happens is, you know, we have more bags being able to be packed in the SUV. So as you can see, I can rev the engine for you, but it's a gutless engine. It doesn't make much sound. Ooh, Ooh wow. All that, all that power. Wow, yeah. Good night. Good, good night, engine. Good night. So as you can see, this is in uh, bi-turbo E-Class AMG. 2017 E43 sedan. E43. Always got to set up the chair. So yeah. You know, if you're willing to spend over a hundred thousand dollars to get only six hundred and fifty horsepower, basically your choices are clear. You either get the BMW, you get the E-Class, or you get a Hellcat, and you save about thirty or forty thousand dollars. Now, do you get an interior as nice as this? No, you don't, obviously. But that's also the reason why you're not spending the extra thirty thousand dollars. So, as you can see, heated, cold seats, and whatnot controls for the right side passenger i really love what they've done with the uh, car how they made it look so good let's give it a rev and you can see the lights and you really don't get a lot of sound out of these things you rev it you get nothing but turbo sound not that exciting right not really no it's not that exciting. So since it, since driving it is more exciting than actually just looking at the interior, let's just take a good look at the interior so I can show you what that looks like. This way I can divide this review into maybe two parts. So uh, you get this wood paneling. Feels like wood, looks good. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. You see that? Wraps all the way around, just like any other E-Class. Looks great. If you turn it on, turn on the radio. How do we turn on the radio? See, that's one of the things that Mercedes got a lot of criticism for. It's like, it's hard to find certain features. Like, once you know where they are, it's not too bad. But certain features, there were a lot of people who were upset that in order for them to simply turn a knob, like, they're used to being able to reach here and turn this, or reach here and turn this, and this would usually be seek, this would be volume. Some people criticize Mercedes. It's like, why did you have to make this so complicated? Now, me personally, I like the um, I like the system, the command system. I really like the command system. It, it's neat. It looks luxurious, and it's 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 elegant. My only problem is when you quickly want to change something simple, you know, you have to figure out where it is. I mean, you look at this. You got the nav system right here. When you push that, it goes straight to nav. You got the radio system. I'll pull back so it's easier to see. You got radio right here. You got meteor, which means your USB, your secure digital cards, etc., etc. Telephone, if you have a telephone linked and whatnot. And then you have car features. Now, I love the way they lay this out. I like the fact that there's no stick shifter here like you'd see in a BMW car because when you free up this space, it just feels more spacious. And that's that's a very good thing. Um, you know, um, basically, it's exactly what... I, like, I've made a couple of videos about the S-Class and I made some videos about the BMW 7. I think Mercedes has a better styling uh, design language going on. I really do. And, um, I mean, you know, these computers are, these, these cars, I should have said these computers, these cars are basically rolling computers now. So basically every single thing in them 
it's like it's you know it's high tech it's advanced etc cetera, etc cetera. so basically let's turn on my cooled seat and I mean it's straightforward it's like if you've ever driven a CTSV you pretty much know exactly what to expect these turbocharged engines have a lot of power when when they're in the um, when you're driving fast you know they have a lot of horsepower but the thing about it is the low end torque isn't exactly that fantastic what you do get is you get that off the line takeoff power simply because you got the all wheel drive and you got a lot of power in this engine problem is the turbo lag you know you got to spool these turbos up it's not as exciting revving one of these things even as it is doing a supercharged v8 like the hellcat so it tells you how much boost you have if you can see that I'm going to split the review up so this way like I can get a lot of detail and everything. Tells you little things and e you know the Mercedes E-Class they added these little dimples so it makes it easier to control certain features on the screen so you can see things like horsepower, oil, life, uh thing, you know, maintenance and whatnot. They make it so it's easy to find those things. Um you do have there's a long learning curve. You got to read the manual. If you don't read the manual, a lot of the things you're going to be lost. You know, some of the things I really do like, like this heating and cooled seats features are very easy to get to. Door lock, unlock, those are easy to get to. I'm really glad Mercedes does that. You know, they have these um, air perfume where you can put, if you want, you can put marijuana in there and you can drive around high all day long. And the cops, if they stop you, they'll search the car for marijuana and they'll be like, hey, wait a minute. Where's the marijuana at? And you'll be like, oh, I don't have any marijuana officer because there's marinol and the car is pumping it, so you can't get me. And that's that. So the E-Class is a perfect, perfect, regardless whether you get the AMG or not, the E-Class is a perfect option if you didn't want to have to spend the money for an S-Class. But if you do have the money and you want a nice AMG product, there's the E-Class. Now, some people might complain. It's like, hey, wait a minute. All of these cars, they look so much alike. It's like the inside of these cars, it looks so much alike. Some people might complain about that. But, um... You know, I mean, I don't think there's much to complain about. It looks like it looks pretty good. You know, it looks uh, it's nice. It's elegant. It's lovely. It drives soft and smooth. Um, you know, if you get the bigger tires, the the small, if you get smaller wheels, bigger tires, you'll get even more cushion from the ground. But um, this is a damn good looking car. It's, it's got like everything. I mean, it's got this command system. Some people complain about this. They think it's a little too twitchy. Like when you touch it, like... If I roll my finger, it's like sometimes it, if you look at my finger and you look at what's rolling, sometimes it's not very exact. The, the perfect thing they could have done, and I've always said this, and some people say, oh, yeah, well, you criticize everybody else but Mercedes and crazy. No, I have said I wish I could reach up here and just touch this. But the Germans apparently don't want you being able to reach up and touch screens. I don't know what that's about. As long as you get the upper end E-Class, you get dual touch screens, just like you would in the S-Class. The E-Class has become the perfect S-Class substitute when you want to save thirty dollars or $40,000. And because you can lease these cars for like four or $500 a month, you know, it's a perfect substitute. But I'm saying it's little things about design. We've been trained how to drive cars. I should be able to reach a turn dial for seek and volume. It's little, little things that that's where Mercedes, I think they kind of screwed up. But most people adapt to having to turn the volume like here. A lot of people adapt to that. A lot of people adapt to, um, you know, simple things like being able to set up, you know, your cruise and sport and all that. It's just that some people do complain about the control interface and I can't blame them when they do. There's just certain little things that I think Mercedes needed to change. And because they didn't do it with the W221, they didn't do it with any of their new cars, I'm guessing they're never going to do it. So I guess they'll just keep everything the way, you know, the way they feel like doing it and that's it. And they don't argue with you because as far as they're concerned, we're Mercedes and you're, you know, you can't argue with us. So as you can see, we've got massage chairs. You know, I love the massage chairs. And then you got dynamic seats. And as you can see, dynamic seats that inflates these bolsters. And that means when you go around the curve, it's like, uh, it doesn't, it feels like the chair's hugging you a little. And then you got the massage seats. Look at that. You get the passenger massage. You get the hot, relaxing back massage. See, I'm, I'm going to look for the Thailand girl in the city massage. I don't see her. So let's look for the Cambodian girl massage. Oh no, I don't see that either. 
Okay, how about hot, relaxing back massage? So it turns on your heated seat and it relaxes your back right along these edges as you see. Most cars don't have shit like that. Oh, oh my goodness, I feel it in my ass. Jesus, wow. Okay, and, and that's the reason why you spend that kind of money for a car like this. It's like, so even though you're driving slow in traffic as you go back and forth from work, it's not a chore to drive the car. It feels great driving the car. That's the reason why you spend that kind of money on one of these cars. Now, you know, if I wasn't so dead set on buying ridiculously powerful engines and ridiculously large cars, it's like, you know, I would settle down with a Mercedes because now with the E-Class where it is, it's like you can get a regular E-Class and you could still have a fantastic luxury run. You don't have to you know, spend so much money anymore in order to get a nice luxury car. I mean, for the base E-Class and the E, um, the middle level E-Classes, I mean, they've got so much stuff in them. They're fantastic. They're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And you, that's the beauty of it. It's like now you get so much and uh, you don't have to spend a large amount of money anymore. That's the fantastic thing about uh, where we are now with cars. It's like now the car has been perfect. You see, I feel the heat all up and down my ass. You see, any place where you see that heat, all I feel is heat. And it's all up and down my back. That's what I pay money for. That's what, that is nice. That is nice right there. That, oh my goodness, I feel like going to sleep in this chair. This chair is hot. It's like 70 degrees outside and the back of my ass is hot because of this chair. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Panoramic moonroof. There's a huge pillar post right here it's between this part and this part. This is soft material which draws in and out. So that's pretty much how they make these uh, cars. You know, that's pretty much how they make them. And as you can see, it's like all these lights and everything. You can change the light to whatever color you want. Um, you know, you got to go into the computer for that. So I, I don't know if I could find it. Maybe I could find it. Let's see, uh, light setting. Boom, there you go. Ambient light. Let's see what I could do. Let's see the color. Uh, color. Color. Let's see. Ooh, look at that. Can you see that? Can you see that? Watch me change the color of the light. Watch this. Let's go down a little. Oh, look at that. Oh, purple. Look at that. It's amazing that a 4K camera can capture that. Look at that. Look at that shit. That is freaking cool. And it's funny because it's really a gimmick. You can buy lights like that to install in cars and they work off of your cell phone app. And it's really a gimmick, but it works so well because it's integrated so well within the car, you know? And it's not really distracting because if you don't like it, you just turn it off. I got green, look at that, look at that. Orange, look at that. That's incredible, right? It's amazing that they can put shit like this in a car right now and it doesn't cost a million, but it's amazing. You know, kings and queens will never drive or ride in the cars that I've had access to in my time on this earth. There are pharaohs who are long dead, who the best they could do was a chariot, and they didn't even have air condition. And now I've got a freaking car where I can turn a freaking dial and I can change the lighting colors. Isn't that crazy? Mercedes, this is the reason I prefer Mercedes. Now, BMW has features just like this. It's just that I don't like the design language inside their cars. Sorry, I just don't. I would never take a 7 Series over an S-Class. And there's some people who start that same bullshit. Eh, well, the S-Class doesn't turn as well. And to those people, I just ignore them. You know, just ignore them. That's usually the best, that's usually the best option. Let's see the white color option. Okay. That's white. White looks pretty good. Let's go back down to that red. Oh, no, in fact, blue. I like blue. That's crazy. It's like, I, you'd be in traffic playing with this shit all... Look at that. That's pretty, that is so cool. You'd be in traffic just playing with this shit, like, all day. Green. Look at this. Green. <laughs> that is so wild. It's, it's like the simple things. It's the little things that matter. In fact, um, for people who haven't seen what the car looks like, let me uh, get out and show you again what the car looks like before I go drive. Let me just show you what the car looks like. Okay, you got sport handling. You know, the only downside about this car is if you try to make the mistake of racing a Hellcat, you're gonna get dusted. So your $100,000 ain't gonna mean shit because you're just gonna get dusted simply because, 
you know, 600 and something horsepower is just a lot lower than 707. I mean, what are you gonna do? So how much is this fucking thing? Oh, 81,000, it's not even that much. It's not even 100,000, 81,045, ain't that something? So you get all that for 81,045. So basically, if you lease this thing, you're talking about 1,100, possibly $1,200 a month. If you were to lease an S-Class, you know, it's about 15, 1600 dollars a month, unless you catch them on a really good sale, or unless you get one used. If you get one used, then you're financing it, and then you're paying about maybe a thousand dollars a month or something. But you're only financing about sixty thousand dollars rather than the extra twenty thousand dollars. So that's the first part of my little video, talking you through the car. It's not a whole lot else to talk about, but it is a fantastic, beautiful product. Don't forget your key. S-Class Cooper.